This is Morgan Auger and I'm making crêpes bretonnes. Je m'appelle Morgan Auger et on va faire des crêpes bretonnes. So the first step of crêpes bretonnes is making the batter. It's very important, of course. No batter, no crepes. So we're going to start that first. In order to make crêpes bretonnes, you need a bowl. Bowl. You need some eggs. You need a recipe. And you know what? I left a picture of the recipe on my Facebook feed. But this is a printout of a photo of my mom's cookbook. So the first thing we do is the batter. And after the batter is done, the second part, of course, is cooking. But that'll be phase two. So, crêpe bretonne. A derivative of that, or a close cousin of crêpe bretonne, of course, is the pancake, the pancake. Uh, almost every culture has crepes, but in Brittany, where I come from, crepes are a really important part of food. Uh, and there's the galette, which is made with buckwheat, and there's the crêpe, which is made with uh, normal flour. So I got some normal flour here, and of course I have an eggs. So what I need for this, Les, les ingrédients, les composants, il faut 150 grammes de farine. You need 150 grams of flour. Il faut deux œufs. Deux. You need two eggs. Il faut du lait. Deux verres environ de lait. You need milk. Approximately two glasses of milk. You need margarine. Il faut de la margarine. I'm not going to use margarine, I'm going to use butter. Du beurre. Moi, je vais utiliser du beurre parce que je n'ai pas de margarine. Je vais en utiliser à peu près 40 grammes. I'm going to use about 40 grams of margarine. You need a little bit of sugar, like a half, a coffee spoon. We don't have teaspoons in French. We have coffee spoons. Uh, il faut, uh, il faut du... Oh, pardon. That was... I'm so sorry. That was salt. Half a coffee spoon of salt. Une demi-cuillerée à sel de sel. Une demi-cuillerée... A café de sel. And you need a little bit of uh, powdered sugar. Il faut un petit peu de sucre en poudre pour, uh, pour que ça marche. Alors, on y va. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'il faut? D'abord, il faut une cuillère hein, pour bien mélanger. Une cuillère. In order to mix well, when you're making crepes, you need a spoon. As compared, of course, to the magical, very, very important uh, spatula. This is a crepe spatula. Ça, c'est une spatula crêpe hein, that comes from Brittany, where I was born. And that's a specialized uh, uh, single purpose. It's not multi-purpose. You only use it for one thing. And uh, what you use it for is, uh, is uh, taking the crepes and flipping it over onto the, on the pan. All right, so let's get started. Dans une terrine, mettez la farine et le sel. Cassez-y les œufs et mélangez avec une cuillère en bois jusqu'à ce que vous obteniez une pâte lisse. Incorporez-y peu à peu. Le lait froid et une noix de margarine juste fondue. Battez bien cette pâte assez liquide. So this is from a very old recipe book. It's the recipe book that my mom got from the French government, I believe, as a wedding present in the early 60s in France. In a, ter in a terrine or a mixing bowl, put the flour and the salt, break into it the eggs, and mix with a wooden spoon until you got it until you obtain a paste, what's that called in English? In pat, a dough, I guess, which is uh, in, in pat lisse, a smooth dough. Add, bit by bit, the cold milk and a nut of margarine just melted. Mix it well until this batter is just liquid. So here we go. We want to go. The flour in the eggs. So here is my flour and the flour says five soup spoons that are very full. La recette dit de mettre cinq cuillerées à soupe très pleine. So there is a technical problem here which is that a French soup spoon is not necessarily the same measurement as a Canadian soup spoon but here I have a soup spoon and I'm going to use that. And I won't mention the fact that I'm doubling the recipe. We'll pretend that I'm not. One, two, three, four, 
5, 5 cuillerées à soupe de farine. Euh, cette recette euh, est pour 12 crêpes, mais moi j'en veux 24, alors donc je double tout. This is a recipe for 12 crêpes, but I want 24, so I'm doubling everything, but I'm speaking as if I'm not doubling. Alors, il faut 2 œufs. Look away from the four. Mettez la farine et le sel. Cassez les œufs. Alors j'ai des bons œufs bruns organiques, mais tous les œufs marchent. I have some nice organic eggs here, but any kind of egg works. And you know, as we all know, this is the under a weird climate with COVID, and it's hard to get exactly what you're looking for. C'est un petit peu plus difficile d'avoir les œufs qu'on qu voudrait avoir. Donc, vous utilisez les œufs que vous avez. Voilà, j'ai mis les œufs. J'ai mis la farine. Je mets du sel. Bon, sel est pas bon. Voilà. Le sel, salt. I put the eggs, I put the flour, and now I'm putting in the salt. So, I'm just gonna fake what a coffee spoon looks like. Uh, that's about a coffee spoon's worth. J'ai mis une demi, la, la recette appelle une demi cuillère à café de sel. The recipe calls for half a coffee spoon. I think it translates to teaspoon of, of uh, salt. Mix with a spoon until it's smooth. So here we are, I'm gonna mix it, like we're gonna mix so I can see. Oh, is this doable without spilling everything? There we go, and we're gonna mix, 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 mix. So this is gonna, so the idea is to not to be too lumpy. We're gonna try to be not too lumpy. Okay, let's see. Oh. Low cost tripods are awful. There you go. It's almost straight. Almost good. How's that? Let's see if that works. So here we are, we're making our flour. And then it says, Incorporer peu à peu le lait froid et une noix de margarine juste fondue. Add little bit by little bit the cold milk and the margarine that has just been melted. So, la margarine, moi j'avais utilisé du beurre, 40 grammes de margarine. Pour 40 grammes de margarine, je vais prendre du beurre. Et voilà, j'ai une, une assiette avec du beurre. Je vais prendre le micro-ondes pour faire ça parce que c'est beaucoup plus facile. Alors, comme vous savez, un gramme, c'est plus ou moins un millilitre. Donc, 40 grammes, c'est plus ou moins 40 millilitres. Et c'est écrit en millilitres sur, le, sur les, le beurre. As you generally know from chemistry, 40 grams is more or less 40 milliliters. Although margarine is a little bit lighter, so you add a little bit. So I'm going to go to 60. So I got 60 grams, roughly, of butter, I believe. Yeah, that's right, because it's marked. You can see the markings, right? On peut voir les marques là de mesure. You can see the marks here for measurement. So I took 60 grams to, to make up for the fact that margarine is the specific gravity of 0.7, as all of us who are engineers know. So you need 1.5 to get more or less what you want. Je mets pour 20 secondes au micro-ondes. I put it for 20 seconds in the microwave and I go look for my milk. Interestingly, I find it's way easier to get milk during uh, the COVID emergency than to get uh, grains or to get um, meat. And I'm not sure why that is, but I'm having a really hard time getting my hands on um, on uh, uh, basically grains. Whereas getting meat is surprisingly, uh, sorry, getting meat is hard too. But when I order vegetables or milk or eggs, I have less problem. 
Alors, et on rajoute de l'effroi et nous, nous, un peu de margarine. J'ai la margarine prête, de et un demi-verre. Oh, de le verre. Here is a glass. In France, when we talk about a glass of milk, we talk about something roughly this size. Un verre, voilà, ça. C'est les verres de Ikea. These are the Ikea glasses I'm going to use. And I'm going to fill it three quarter to make it look like a verre. Alors, comme vous voyez, ce sont des mesures approximatives. As you can see, there's our approximate measurements. Alors, remembering that I'm doubling my doses, so instead of two and a half, I'm going to use five. N'oublions pas que je double mes doses, alors deux verres et demi, c'est cinq verres. Tenez, un verre. Deux verres. Trois verres. And I'm going to... Fake it. Je vais aussi euh, faire ça à l'œil au cas où il y a trop de lait. Je n'ai pas de margarine. Je vais en utiliser à peu près 40 grammes. I'm going to use about 40 grammes of margarine. You need a little bit of sugar, like a half a coffee spoon. We don't have teaspoons in French. We have coffee spoons. Uh, il faut uh, il faut du oh pardon that was I'm so sorry that was salt. Half a coffee spoon of salt. Une demi cuillerée à sel de sel. Une demi cuillerée à café de sel. And you need a little bit of uh, powdered sugar. Il faut un petit peu de sucre en poudre pour, uh, pour que ça marche. Alors, on y va. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'il faut? D'abord, il faut une cuillère hein, pour bien mélanger. Une cuillère. In order to mix well, when you're making crepes, you need a spoon. As compared, of course, to the magical, very, very important... Uh, spatula. This is a crepe spatula. Ça, c'est une spatule à crêpe hein, that comes from Brittany, where I was born. And that's a specialized uh, single purpose. It's not multi-purpose. You only use it for one thing. And uh, what you use it for is, uh, is uh, taking the crepes and flipping it over onto the, on the pan. All right, so let's get started. Dans une terrine, mettez la farine et le sel. Cassez-y les œufs et mélangez avec une cuillère en bois jusqu'à ce que vous obteniez une pâte lisse. Incorporez-y peu à peu. Le lait froid et une noix de margarine juste fondue. Battez bien cette pâte assez liquide. So this is from a very old recipe book. It's the recipe book that my mom got from the French government, I believe, as a wedding present in the early 60s in France. In a, ter in a terrine or a mixing bowl, put the flour and the salt, break into it the eggs, and mix with a wooden spoon until you got, a, until you obtain a paste, what's that called in English? In pat, a dough, I guess, which is uh, in, in pat lisse, a smooth dough. Add bit by bit the cold milk and a nut of margarine just melt it. Mix it well until this batter is just liquid. So here we go. We want to go the flour in the eggs. So here is my flour. And the flour says five soup spoons that are very full. La recette dit de mettre cinq cuillerées à soupe très pleine. So there is a technical problem here, which is that a French soup spoon is not necessarily the same measurement as a Canadian soup spoon. But here I have a soup spoon, and I'm going to use that. And I won't mention the fact that I'm doubling the recipe. We'll pretend that I'm not. One, two, three, four, five. Cinq cuillerées à soupe de farine. Uh, cette recette uh, est pour 12 crêpes, mais moi j'en veux 24, alors donc je double tout. This is a recipe for 12 crêpes, but I want 24, so I'm doubling everything, but I'm speaking as if I'm not doubling. Alors, il faut deux œufs. Look away from the four. Mettez la farine et le sel, cassez les œufs. Alors j'ai des bons œufs bruns organiques, mais tous les œufs marchent. I have some nice organic eggs here, but any kind of egg works. And 
you know, as we all know, this is the under a weird climate with COVID and it's hard to get exactly what you're looking for. C'est un petit peu plus difficile d'avoir les œufs qu'on qu voudrait avoir, donc vous utilisez les œufs que vous avez. Voilà, j'ai mis les œufs, j'ai mis la farine, je mets du sel. Bon, sel, quand même. Voilà. Le sel, salt. I put the eggs, I put the flour, and now I'm putting in the salt. So, I'm just gonna fake what a coffee spoon looks like. Uh, that's about a coffee spoon's worth. J'ai mis une demi, la, la recette appelle une demi cuillère de, à café de sel. The recipe calls for half a coffee spoon. I think it translates to teaspoon of, of uh, salt. Mix with a spoon until it's smooth. So here we are, I'm gonna mix it. Like we're gonna mix so I can see. Oh, is this doable without spilling everything? There we go, and we're gonna mix, 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 mix. So this is gonna, so the idea is to not to be too lumpy. We're gonna try to be not too lumpy. Okay, let's see. Oh. Low cost tripods are awful. There you go. It's almost straight. Almost good. How's that? Let's see if that works. So here we are, we're making our flour, and then it says Incorporer peu à peu le lait froid et une noix de margarine juste fondu. Add little bit by little bit the cold milk and the margarine that has just been melted. So, la margarine, moi j'avais utilisé du beurre, 40 grammes de margarine. Pour 40 grammes de margarine, je vais prendre du beurre et voilà j'ai une, une assiette avec du beurre je vais prendre le micro-ondes pour faire ça parce que c'est beaucoup plus facile alors comme vous savez un gramme c'est plus ou moins un millilitre donc 40 grammes c'est plus ou moins 40 millilitres et c'est écrit en millilitres sur le, sur les, sur le beurre as you generally know from chemistry, 40 grams is more or less 40 milliliters, although margarine is a little bit lighter, so you add a little bit, so I'm going to go to 60. So I got 60 grams, roughly, of butter, I believe. Yeah, that's right, because it's marked. You can see the markings, right? On peut voir les marques, là, de mesure. You can see the marks here for measurement. So I took 60 grams. To, to make up for the fact that margarine has a specific gravity of 0 0.7, as all of us who are engineers know. So you need 1.5 to get more or less what you want. Je mets pour 20 secondes au micro-ondes. I put it for 20 seconds in the microwave, and I go look for my milk. Interestingly, I find, it's way easier to get milk during uh, the COVID emergency than to get uh, grains or to get um, meat. And I'm not sure why that is, but I'm having a really hard time getting my hands on um, on uh, uh, basically grains. Whereas getting meat is surprisingly, uh, sorry, getting meat is hard too, but when I order Vegetables or milk or eggs, I have less problem. Alors, et on rajoute le lait froid et une, un peu de margarine. J'ai la margarine prête. Deux et un demi verre. Oh, de le verre. Here is a glass. In France, when we talk about a glass of milk, we talk about something roughly this size. Un verre, voilà, ça. C'est les verres de Ikea. These are the Ikea glasses I'm going to use. And I'm going to fill it three quarter to make it look like a verre. Alors, comme vous voyez, ce sont des mesures approximatives. As you can see, there are approximate measurements. Alors, remembering that I'm doubling my doses. So instead of two and a half, I'm going to use five. 
N'oublions pas que je double mes doses. Alors, deux verres et demi, c'est cinq verres. Tenez, un verre. Deux verres. Trois verres. And I'm gonna fake it. Je vais aussi euh, faire ça à l'œil au cas où il y a trop de lait. Mais une pâte à crêpe est une pâte très liquide. A crepe batter is very liquid. Uh, unlike uh, we're accustomed to pancake batters, on connaît les pâtes à les pâtes à pancake. Et les pâtes à pancake sont assez épaisses. Une pâte à crêpe est, je dirais, deux fois ou trois fois plus liquide qu'une pâte à pancake. A uh, pancake batter is pretty thick. You know, I'd say it's two or three times thicker than a batter for crepes. Ah, butter. Oh, the butter needs more. 20 seconds wasn't enough. I'm going to give 20 seconds more. 20 seconds de plus. Alors, la pâte à crêpe liquifie. Je rajoute, maintenant parce que je double la dose, je rajoute jusqu'à 5 verres. 4, 5 verres de lait. I'm not sure if you all noticed, the same as I noticed, but I've noticed I'm going through way more milk than I was going through before. Je ne sais pas si vous avez remarqué, mais je consomme beaucoup plus de lait que je ne consommais d'habitude. Maintenant euh, que je suis euh, en isolation chez moi avec ma famille, on consomme euh, 4 à 6 litres de lait par semaine maintenant, tandis qu'avant on faisait ça en, en un mois presque. C'est drôle de voir comment on change nos habitudes. It's strange to see our habits changing when we're, um, when we're having to have a big adjustment in our lifestyle. Alors voilà, on est en train de faire la crêpe. Alors comme vous voyez, la, la pâte, oh c'est très difficile à voir, je vais faire, faire comme ça. Comme vous voyez, la pâte, elle est assez liquide. C'est comme du milkshake. The batter looks like milkshake. Milkshake in French is milkshake. Like sweater. In French, is pullover. You have to say it with a French accent. It works way better that way. Universal French. Just, you take English words and you add a French accent to it. And if you want to sound like a Parisian, you clip your words and make them sound really, really slow, really short. Mais qu'est-ce qu'elle dit, elle, zut alors? Then you sound like a Parisian French. Because in Brittany, we also make fun of Parisians, just like they do in Quebec. And just like in Quebec, it might have something to do with jealousy and fierce independence and pride of place. Alors, maintenant, je vais tricher et je vais utiliser un whisk, un batteur. You see, when you don't know the word in French, you just use the English word with a French accent. The whisk can be le whisk. It has another name. I think it's a, a bat. Un batteur à oeufs, un fouet, un fouet, a whip, that's what it's called. This is a whip in French, un fouet. That's obvious, right? Of course it's a whip. Alors, maintenant, on libère un peu des pistons. Alors, le problème dans les crêpes, the problem in crepes, is the chunks, the lumps, right? Les grumeaux, no lumps allowed, a, a crepe that has lumps is not a good crepe. Une crêpe qui a des grumeaux est terrible, n'est pas du tout délicieuse. Les enfants refusent de les manger. Et alors donc, il faut faire attention de ne pas avoir de grumeaux. Alors maintenant, je rajoute le beurre. Petit à petit, je l'incorpore en mélangeant sans trop battre le tout. Voilà. Comme ça. Mmm, ça a l'air bon, ça. Comme ça. Et maintenant, il faut enlever les grumeaux. Now you have to get rid of the lumps, because lumps are sin, like I said. Alors, we switch over to the whip, and in the whip, we will mix the grumeaux. Voilà. Alors, get all the flour off of here. In the age of industrialized mecha mechanization, of course, we use other tools to do this, which I may rely on. For example, the Moulinex uh, mixer does a really good job of getting rid of lumps. 
dans le monde industrialisé, on utilise aussi des choses comme le moulinex. Avec un moulinex, on peut enlever les grumeaux rapidement. Mais là, je fais ça à la main parce que c'est une démonstration puriste. Alors, on mélange le tout très bien comme ça. Mmh, qu'est-ce qu'elle est belle uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the French chef woman. She made grape crème flambée, uh, crêpe flambée et des crêpes à l'orange. Uh, Julia Child. No, Martha Child? It's not Martha Stewart. She only uses like exotic ingredients that nobody can get. Whereas this is uh, Robin Hood flour and salt from the store. I didn't ask you to bring Antarctic and salt. Mais alors on mélange comme ça. Pour bien mélanger le tout. Mais faut pas trop mélanger trop fort. It's important not to mix it too hard. But if you have a clump problem, then uh, you know, the kung fu for clump problems is the electromechanical devices. Voilà. Comme ça. And you check for lumps. Mmm, it looks so good. There you go. I'm going to check my recipe. I don't want to like cheat you. There you go. Very good. So this is what you get out of it. So the batter looks a bit like this. Here, I'll give you an idea. I'll, I'll use a hmm, spoon. I'll use a new spoon. There you go. Should look, it should look, see the, there's the, the oil kind of surfaces a little bit. It's not, I guess, there you go. Should be like that. It's still a little lumpy. I'm going to have to de-lump it a little bit. But it's that kind of consistency, that kind of fluidity to it. And that's a crepe that's really good. Batter that's going to really be really good. And I'm going to have to cheat a little bit to de-lump it a little more. Because I took my time. When you take too much time and chit-chat on social media, you end up with a batter that has too much... Uh, that has too much time for the egg to turn into a solid with the with the flour as may have happened here anyway so now what you do is you let it sit for about a half an hour and then you start cooking so i'm gonna hang up now and in a half an hour i'm gonna try to do a demonstration of cooking the batter to see if it's a disaster or if i lived up to my heritage nobody wants to let down their ancestors with terrible heritage like an awful crepe. Okay, see you later. Uh, have a wonderful Sunday, and I hope that uh, this uh, eh, this um, recipe is interesting to you. Et si vous voulez la recette, if you would like to see the recipe, elle est sur ma page Facebook. Quelque part euh, autour d'aujourd'hui, j'ai pris une photo qui vient de ma maman et je l'ai mise euh, sur le site. Alors sur sur mon stream de Facebook. Okay, tout le monde. À plus tard. Ciao. Hey folks, so this is Morgan Auger and welcome to part 2 of Making Crêpe Bretagne. Bonjour tout le monde, Morgan Auger ici et bienvenue à la deuxième partie de la démonstration fabrication et préparation de crêpes bretonnes. Alors on a fait la, la pâte à crêpes dans le premier épisode et comme vous voyez là le voilà, la pâte elle est comme ça, elle est très très belle, assez lisse. Il y a des, un petit peu de grumeaux, mais pas trop. Et, euh, et elle est prête à faire. Et j'ai fait, bien sûr, euh, je... Et alors maintenant, ce qu'on fait, c'est on prend la poêle que j'ai préchauffée à 4 sur le, sur le feu. So, I've taken the, um, uh, the... What's it called? The, the mix. The flour, the batter. And I let it sit for a while. And it's nice and smooth, you know, very, quite liquid. Liquid like, imagine McDonald's milkshake that's been allowed to melt. That's about how liquid it is. And then I preheated my saucepan over here. Big frying pan that's already preheated. It's stainless steel, this one. I'm relying on butter to keep it things from sticking. And I have a little piece of cloth here with some butter on it that I use to put on the bottom like this to make sure things don't stick. I also use it to make sure everything's going to be all right like that. And then I take my flat, my, my, my ladle here, and I take about half deep a ladle, and I put it onto the pan at an angle from the top, and I mix like this, and I go like that, 
as you can see, and it makes a very nice crepe with some holes on this one. I'm gonna fill the holes with a little bit of hole fixing, like that. And there you go, kind of like an amateur, not quite round crepe at the bottom. Now, in a creperie, they would be using a, a pan that looks like a, looks like one of those, uh, um, oh, the, oh, what are those restaurants called where they, you put the vegetables onto a hot plate and the meat and you cook it and then you put it onto pancakes. I don't remember what that's called. It was really popular in Vancouver a few years ago. Um, and then you use a, 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 a kind of a, a special shaped stick to smooth the batter around so it's uh, it's nice and thin, but you don't have that at home. Alors voilà la crêpe comme ça, j'ai une, une spatule, I have a spatula, here's the spatula, and the crepe is cooking here, and I'm going to do a close-up of the cooking crepe to show you. So here's the, oh boy, let's figure this out, there's the crepe cooking, and you look at the edges, and when you look at the edges, come on, regarde sur le côté, on voit que ça commence à, 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 à devenir sec. You see how it's starting to dry on the edges? And that's the telltale sign that the crepe is going to be ready to eat. <coughs> mm. Very sensitive about people coughing around us, aren't we, these days. Alors voilà, comme ça, ça, ça cuit. As you see, it's cooking. So the problem is they're very delicate when you cook them. And if you mess with them too much, of course, you end up with a problem of a broken crepe. Si on touche trop, ça casse la crêpe, alors il faut faire attention. When you have a chance, and it's all, so it also feeds your ACD, you can kind of play with the edges a little bit. Comme ça. I'm going to put this back here. Comme ça, c'est bon. Voilà. Ça continue et on laisse ça à continuer à chauffer. Comme ça. Et so we continue. On laisse ça cuire. It's on four here out of uh, maximum. C'est sur quatre sur le um, sur le uh, thermostat du, du contrôle électrique. Et je suis sur la grosse plaque. I'm on the big uh, element here. Le gros élément, la grosse plaque. La grosse plaque et la petite plaque. The big element and the little element. And the crepe is, is looking more ready now. If you look, you can see on the edge, it's starting to brown here. You can see the browning a little bit like that. And it's starting to be the right color. And then, oh no, I upset my delicate tripod situation. You can't do it right with a bad tripod. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, good. So now I take my spatula and I'm gonna Mess around with it just to make sure it's not stuck anywhere. Like that. If it gets stuck anywhere, then it tears. So like this. And then I'm going to go to, of course, my Breton spatula. Because culture is important in life. Use your cultural tools. And we go like this. And we flipped it. And here we have, here I'll use it like this. Here we have... Look at that beautiful crepe. Elle est belle la crêpe, hein, comme ça. Juste la belle couleur. Et on continue à cuire. We keep it cooking. And then we're going to get a very, very nice surface. I'm trying to keep a short eye on the time, but I can't tell what time it is. Anyhow, here we are. Like this. And... Check underneath a little bit till, till it's brown. On regarde pour vérifier que c'est bien brun. Ce n'est pas encore prêt. Ce sera bientôt prêt. Et c'est comme ça. Ça prendra environ 2 minutes, 3 minutes par crêpe de suivre cette recette. Et donc, euh, l'idée est de continuer à faire les crêpes pendant que la famille mange. Uh, the idea of crêpes is that it takes about 2 or 3 minutes to make a crêpe. So, in the, in the Breton household, what you would have often is one person is making the crepes in one or two pans and the rest of the family is eating in the kitchen table. And they're coming out fresh as they're being eaten and everybody's like waiting for the crepe. And then you ask what people want. Here I'm just showing what you, how to make the crepe. But of course, there's the garnish on them. And the traditional garnish in France, in Brittany, would be sugar with lemon and butter on it. 
you put a bit of sugar on the crepe, you put a bit of sh a butter in the middle, and then you put, you squeeze some lemon onto it, and then you fold it in half and let it caramelize a little bit. Another favorite is um, strawberry, strawberry jam. Alors, dans une maison bretonne, typiquement, dans les familles, ça c'est vraiment quelque chose de famille, on, euh, on prépare les crêpes euh, pendant que les gens sont en train de les manger. Donc la famille est en train de manger les crêpes, et il y a une personne, traditionnellement c'était la mère, mais maintenant ce sera n'importe qui, qui prépare les crêpes. Et une crêpe prend plus ou moins deux minutes, donc comme ça, toutes les deux minutes il y a une crêpe, et elles sont faites à la demande. Alors là, je refais une autre, une autre crème de démo, extraction. Je crois que ce sera la dernière. Et pendant que la mère ou que la personne est en train de faire les crêpes, elle prend des commandes. Et les commandes de crêpes traditionnelles en Bretagne, typiquement pour les crêpes sucrées, sont une crêpe au beurre et au sucre, ou au beurre, au sucre et au citron. Et on saupoudre un petit peu de beurre, de sucre, et on met un peu de beurre une fois que la crêpe est retournée. Et ensuite on met du citron dessus et on plie la crêpe en deux et on fait une deuxième fois pour faire en quatre et ça donne une crêpe euh, au citron. Il euh, y a des gens qui appellent ça les crêpes Suzette de temps en temps. Euh, une autre crêpe euh, délicieuse que les enfants adorent, ce sont des crêpes à la... à, à la... Euh, euh, oh boy, jam À la confiture, des crêpes à la confiture. Alors typiquement, confiture framboise ou confiture fraise aussi à la pêche ou à l'apricot et on met de la confiture sur la crêpe, on, on plie et c'est absolument délicieux et ça donne un très bon esprit de famille de faire ça parce que euh, on est tous ensemble et tout le monde euh, s'amuse bien en train de manger les crêpes pendant que les autres crêpes sont en train de se faire préparer. Mais il ne faut pas oublier, don't forget that the person making the crepes gets pretty hot and needs to be like Pay attention to, it's important. N'oubliez pas que faire des crêpes, c'est très amusant. Mais si on n'a pas la possibilité de les manger aussi, ce n'est pas satisfaisant. Don't forget to leave crepes for the cook who cooked them or take turns. That's the only way. Again, anyhow, here I am with my cup. I'm going to flip it. Oh, look at this one. Regardez ça là, elle est très belle. Ouh, attends, elle est un petit peu, encore un petit peu. Voilà, ça c'est de la crêpe, hein? Isn't it a pretty crêpe? Hmm. Boy, looking forward to eating crêpes tonight. Um, so a variation on this is uh, le, le crêpe au, uh, au sarrasin, les galettes. Oh, ça c'est du froment, donc les crêpes de sarrasin. A variation on this, of course, is galettes that are made with buckwheat instead of being made with... Uh, um, Durham or standard wheat flour and uh, they're very different tasted tasting and those crepes those galettes are really delicious when you put an egg and some ham or an equivalent some cheese and so ham and cheese and egg galette is called the complete the complete the comprehensive galette and that's what people uh, order when I go to France you know I try to go to France maybe every three years to reconnect with my roots uh, I, there, it's not possible for me to go without going to crêperie, which is the places where crêpes are made. Quand je vais en France tous les trois ans, je vais dans des crêperies uh, pour un peu me reconnecter à, à mes, uh, à mes, uh, uh, hmm, mes roots, <laughs> mes racines. Et dans les crêperies, uh, je commande une galette complète, œuf, jambon, fromage. Uh, et alors là, qu'est-ce que c'est bon C'est délicieux. Um, et voilà. Si vous passez et mangez des crêpes, traditionnellement en France ou en Bretagne, on mange ça avec du lait baraté. Du, um, ça a un, il y a un nom en français, en anglais pour ça, je ne me rappelle plus comment c'est. Um, buttermilk. The, the traditional, a traditional drink to have with crepes in Brittany is buttermilk. You drink the buttermilk. It's an acquired taste. It's a little, you know, like kefir is an acquired taste as well. Um, and um, so buttermilk is a, a, a delicious drink to have. And of course, the other drink that almost everybody has crepes or galettes with is cider. So cider comes from Brittany and from Normandy and from England. 
Uh, of course, it's pressed apples that are fermented, and you rarely have crepes without cider. En Bretagne, bien sûr, on, man, on boit du cidre ou du lait baraté avec les crêpes. Et le cidre, de, le cidre de pomme est d'origine de, de Bretagne et de Normandie, aussi d'Angleterre, où on a du cidre là-bas. Et c'est ça qu'on prend avec, euh, avec nos crêpes. All right, that's how you make crêpes Bretagne. That's how you eat them. Mm, I'm really looking forward to eating these. I won't eat them in front of you. You're going to have to use your imagination. Uh, I'd love to know if you try this recipe out and you make some for yourself. Leave some comments in the bottom. It doesn't tell me how it worked out. I'd really love to know. Ok, au revoir à tout le monde. C'est la fin de notre leçon crêpe, francisation, anglophonisation. Je m'appelle Morgan Ozé. J'ai my name is Morgan Ozé, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the experience. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Stay away from people until it's safe to do so. Maintain social distancing distances. Don't forget to get some exercise. Do go outside and get some air. Uh, and stay healthy and uh, have a wonderful end of your weekend. Okay, bye everybody.